限界暗号を操れて不完全<laughs> the cycle <laughs> Megami's Ten Shadows is meant to be one of the strongest techniques in the series when reaching its absolute limit. Limits that we haven't seen yet as both Megami and the technique become more polished with time. While the Shikigami in their base forms struggle with special grade curses, once they inherit the power of dead Shikigami that they're compatible with, they become leagues stronger than they were before. Megami's potential even being enough to catch the attention of Sukuna himself. Megami Shikigami have a wide variety of attack options, some of which being Nue's electricity based attacks, Max Elephant, who's water based, Orochi, a snake Shikigami that was destroyed by Sukuna, Frog and Rabbit Shikigami for utility, and Divine Dog Totality, which can even damage Hanami, a curse that Noritoshi even compares to Vengeful Spirit Naoya. Hanami and Vengeful Spirit Naoya being some of the most durable curses ever introduced into the series, being able to shrug off more damage than most sorcerers as well, taking Megami's Divine Dogs from something that any competent fighter in the series would laugh at to something that even the strongest of fighters would have to be wary of. Its strength alone making it something that has to be dealt with, rather than ignored like many other weak curses and Shikigami in the series. Megami can store anything from weapons to entire human bodies inside of his shadow. Against Reggie Star, he uses his shadow to dive into and protect himself from attacks, while also storing weapons like Playful Cloud and others for later use, which he can then extend to give weapons to other people as well. One drawback of this technique being that Megami has to bear the weight of whatever's inside of his shadow, meaning that the weight trapped inside of his shadow at any given point in time, being more than he can handle, can physically strain him and slow him down. Although, as shown during his fight with Reggie, he can handle thousands of pounds of weight while already injured and fatigued, so this limit is higher than you may think. This exact scenario being something that's covered later. Taking this even farther, Megami can warp inside the shadows of other people. This is especially good for catching enemies off guard, which he does more than once, giving him ways of moving like an assassin under the right circumstances. <clears throat> Megami's domain is by far his most powerful technique. Even though it's incomplete, Megami can create multiple clones of himself and his Shikigami that match their original in strength. The domain is typically used inside of solid structures like gyms or buildings, since in its incomplete state, people can walk right out of it if you use it in a wide open area. Although this lack of a solid barrier isn't like Kenjaku or Sukuna's. Their domains don't have solid barriers because they're far more advanced, and Megami's doesn't have a solid barrier yet because it isn't finished. He can also literally drag his opponents into the Shadow Realm like a Yu-Gi-Oh character. Megami's domain sends a shadow everywhere around the area it's used in, both above and below his opponents. Megami, or one of his clones, can then drag his opponents into the shadow where they fall endlessly in a void with no oxygen until they eventually lose consciousness and die. He does have to bear the weight of whatever enters his shadow, as mentioned before, but seeing as he can hold up literal tons of weight while injured and fatigued, holding a human body in his shadow until it dies should be no problem. Maharaga being the strongest of all the Shikigami in the Ten Shadows to date, Maharaga being able to adapt to any and all phenomenon like a late throw in rock, paper, scissors, meaning that Maharaga, if hit by a slashing technique, will become immune to slashing attacks and continue to regenerate over and over again, until it's hit by an attack that isn't remotely in the same category as the one it's adapted to before, with Maharaga having access to positive energy with the Sword of Extermination that can one-shot Cursed Spirits, being the only curse in the series so far that was able to fight Sukuna at 75% of his strength, meaning that Maharaga would dog-walk Jogo with no problem. The same Jogo that could bliss Nanami, who was shown multiple times being around the same speed as Yuji and Mahito. And the same Jogo that could tag and burn down Naobito in a single shot. Naobito being so fast that most of the Jujutsu Kaisen universe can't even see him move giving him a way to banish his enemies into an endless shadow where they'll fall to their deaths until he decides that they shouldn't, a variety of Shikigami with ways of killing his opponents without them ever knowing he was there, the ability to clone himself with each clone being equal to him in strength, and a last resort Shikigami, Maharaga that's almost unbeatable in his own verse. Now that his abilities are out of the way, we can get into his scaling in his own verse, maybe even showing why he's held at such a high potential by characters in his own series, something that Megami himself doesn't even seem to fully understand yet. With that being said, how strong is Megami Fushiguro? When scaling Megami, it's important to know that he's suppressed for the majority of the series. 
This isn't for reasons like Gojo, who would kill everyone around him if he went all out. Megami's suppression comes from his mentality and a gross misunderstanding of his own technique that Gojo even points out to him on one occasion. In the beginning of the series, Megami is far too dependent on Maharaga, thinking that killing both himself and his enemies with Maharaga's summoning as a last resort is what his technique is really good for, which Gojo even mentions to him in person. This causes Megami to not develop himself as much as he possibly could, as he thinks his ultimate purpose in a fight is a kamikaze ending that hardly anyone would survive. Examples of this being jumping to summon Maharaga against Toto when it wasn't necessary, doing the same against a finger bear who he later beat without Maharaga, and doing the same against Sukuna, Haruga Shigemo, and Hanami although at least one of those moments were justified. Throughout the series, Megami is very much like Maki in the sense that he often trains alone. Gojo points this out in a flashback where he mentions that even though Megami has been around him since he was seven years old, he hardly ever goes to Gojo for training, despite Gojo being one of the strongest fighters on the planet. Due to this, many of Megami's progression moments can be seen as a byproduct of his own intelligence and ingenuity with developing his technique, as there's no evidence that he has any access to any notes on the technique from past users from the Zenin clan. In the beginning of the series, Megami actually has more progression than many people realize. He goes from nearly being one-shot by a semi-grade one curse in the very beginning of the series, to being blissed by a finger bear who could rip apart Yuji, to surviving multiple attacks from a three-finger Sukuna, to then fighting a much stronger finger bear than the one that blitzed and killed Divine Dog White earlier in the series, before he even realized what was happening. This is significant because the semi-grade one who nearly one-shotted him in the beginning of the series shouldn't hold a candle to the finger bear that he fought later, with him going from nearly being one-shot to overwhelming an even stronger enemy in a short amount of time. This finger bear being even more important when looking at Megami's progression, because Yuji could barely match a much weaker variant of it earlier in the series. Yet here's Megami beating a far stronger finger bear than the one that Yuji needed Sukuna to save him from before training with Gojo, implying that Megami grew far stronger in that short amount of time. From the very beginning of the series, Megami has many intelligence feats that separate him from other members of the cast. Examples being figuring out Jiro's technique, which Yuji showed no sign of understanding beforehand, cracking Kirara's technique in their first fight, and often tricking his enemies into revealing information that leads to him making a strategy to beat them. The only person that saw through him so far being Sukuna, one of the greatest fighters in the last 1,000 years. Jiro's technique being something that he figured out after threatening him with Gojo to see how he would react. Jiro revealing that he can't beat Gojo, giving Megami enough information to piece together that he can't nullify all damage that he comes into contact with. Making the other option inverting the power of his enemy strikes, hard strikes being made weak and weak strikes being being made strong, something that Megami uses to his advantage. Kirara's technique being confirmed after a bluff that Megami used to read his opponent's facial expressions after piecing together that the stars in Love Rendezvous were connected to the constellation of the Southern Cross, which he uses to beat Kirara in a way that many other characters in the series, like Yuji, wouldn't have figured out in such a small amount of time. Megami clearly drawing parallels to Suguru, who was the far more calculated fighter out of himself and Gojo. Suguru's approach to fighting being almost entirely revolved around strategy, and Gojo's being amplified by raw strength. The exact same relationship between Megami and Yuji, Suguru and Megami even having similar techniques. During the exchange event, Megami fights Hanami, the most durable of the disaster curses, who can tank Inumaki with no problem, even going heads up with Toto and Yuji at the same time. Hanami, whose durability is still top tier in the series even when Maki and Noritoshi fight vengeful spirit Naoya. Yet Megami's divine dog totality can rip chunks out of Hanami's flesh with one attack. This is significant because it's yet another example of Megami's growth in the series. Before the event even started, he was being blitzed by Toto and pushed into a life or death mindset after only being hit three times. Yet here he is tagging Hanami and ripping apart Hanami's body with his Shikigami, where Toto can only punch dents into Hanami's body at best. The same Toto that ran through five grade one curses and a special grade with no strain to his body. That's even considered to be a monster to those around him. Moving to the Shibuya arc, Maki, Nanami, and Naobito are being pressured by Dagon. Dagon being one of the disaster curses, making him one of the strongest curses alive at that point in the series, who was so strong that Nanami didn't even think he could damage him with his curse technique. Maki being completely outclassed in the fight from the beginning, needing to be saved by Naobito when Dagon would have one-shotted her. Dagon now has Naobito, Maki, and Nanami trapped inside of his domain, and is about to kill all three of them at the same time. 
Megami, even in his fatigued state, is able to rip a hole in Dagon's domain to remove his guaranteed hit, long enough for the original team of three to pressure Dagon, despite Megami already being close to having reached his limit. This essentially gives an entrance for Toji, who murders Dagon with no problem. This is important to highlight because while Megami ripping a hole in Dagon's domain for such a long amount of time is impressive, it also highlights Megami's intelligence, making a strategy on the spot that led to him and others around him defeating an enemy stronger than himself. Megami being the only person in that entire group that had a domain to begin with, even with it still being incomplete, still finding a way to use it in that exact moment that gave him and the others around him an advantage. Megami is then targeted and dragged outside by Toji, who targeted the strongest around. This has been misinterpreted to mean that Megami is stronger than Nanami in that moment if both of them were at their peaks. Interpreting the statement this way is wrong for the simple reason that Naobito was also in the room. The strongest round would also include Naobito, and Megami during the Shibuya arc is not stronger than Naobito by any means. So using it to say that he's specifically stronger than Nanami and taking Naobito out of the equation doesn't make any sense. What this statement means in the context of the story is that Megami was the healthiest and most able fighter. Naobito having an arm ripped off, Nanami being chewed apart by Degen Shikigami, and Maki being exhausted make Megami the most appealing, even when he's close to his limit. Toji even in his undead state is one of the strongest fighters in the entire series, missing his personality but retaining his fighting ability. This would include all of his hacks like not being able to sense his presence due to him having no cursed energy immunity to domain expansions, his passive regeneration abilities, precognition, and speed that Megami claims even surpasses a three-finger Sukuna, which honestly isn't hard to believe. The same speed that Maki used to outclass Vengeful Spirit Naoya later all against an exhausted Megami Fushiguro. Being far stronger and using his quick thinking, Megami is able to dodge Toji by predicting his movements, which in itself is impressive given all of Toji's hacks mentioned earlier. This doesn't mean that Megami is faster than Toji as he's shown not being able to hit him even when Toji is right in front of him. This needs to be stated as many people have pointed it out as an inconsistency with some thinking that Megami legitimately dodged Toji with raw combat speed. While he did do well here, given what he had to work with, he would have been killed had the fight gone on. After getting separated from Yuji during the culling games, Megami's main focus is to obtain enough points from his respective colony to create new rules that he, Yuji, and the others agreed upon for the culling games, meaning that Megami's opponents have to be beaten while keeping them alive despite them fighting to kill him. This is particularly odd for Megami as he runs into an entire group of people rather than one opponent like Yuji did, although he is able to get rid of some of them after Yuji gets 100 points from Higuruma. How strong Reggie and his goons are is pretty vague, since there's no way to scale them to anyone else in the series at the time of this video. While Megami does have impressive feats like surviving explosions at close range, being able to fight multiple enemies, and surviving without reverse curse technique, this isn't the highlight of the matchup. The real fight being with Reggie Star, with the highlight of the fight being Megami's domain expansion. Megami activates his domain against Reggie and pushes his technique to 120% of its potential, letting him clone himself several times with each clone being equal to him in strength, being able to clone his Shikigami and having his Shikigami grow stronger as well letting him drop elephants on top of his opponents that weigh anywhere from 6 to 12,000 pounds, and drag his opponents into an endless void with no oxygen that they can't escape from unless Megami ejects them himself, which Reggie got out of due to him projecting a car to force him out before he went under. There have been questions about Megami's Shikigami, like whether they're sentient or have their own cursed energy pools. The Shikigami being sentient as shown during his fights with Hanami and Sukuna, where his Shikigami take commands and respond to other speech from Megami specifically specifically, having their own cursed energy pools being shown by the fact that they're summoned via rituals and having their own movesets independent of Megami's control. Him having to use a certain amount of cursed energy to summon tame Shikigami being like the concept of equivalent exchange from Full Metal Alchemist, or even summoning Jutsu and Naruto ironically enough. Summoning something from another realm or area requiring some sort of sacrifice on the user's part, regardless of the thing that they're summoning having its own independent source of strength. Megami stating early on that summoning the Shikigami, namely Max Elephant, takes a significant amount of his stamina, against Noritoshi claiming that he can only summon Max Elephant once a day. Yet during his fight with Reggie in the Cullen Games, summoning Max Elephant multiple times along with his other Shikigami and using his domain expansion, still having enough stamina despite being injured to stand and fight Reggie in the end, passing out from exhaustion once it was all finished 
clearly growing stronger in the stamina and cursed energy department as well. Megami in his career as a sorcerer has gone from a 7 year old boy who barely knew what Jujutsu was, to getting blitzed and smacked around by nearly everyone in the series, to then keeping up with and ripping apart one of the most durable curses of his generation, summoning one of the strongest Shikigami on the planet that needed Sukuna himself to compete with it, to then making one of the most versatile and dangerous domain expansions in the show all while pushing himself and his technique with as little guidance as possible. Megami is a character that not only comes from a long line of powerful sorcerers, but also has a technique that's been well known as one of the strongest for 1000 years straight. The series constantly alluding to this hidden potential that Megami has for many different reasons, some of which stem from his connections to the Zenin clan, others being connected to his technique, and his potential as a fighter on an individual level. Ten Shadows as a technique dates all the way back to the Heian era, coming from one of the big three vengeful spirits. Ten Shadows being a technique that has kept the Zenin clan in power for over 1000 years. The Zenin clan being one of the strongest and most ruthless clans in the entire series that had an ongoing power struggle with the Gojo clan until they were wiped out by Maki Zenin. Ten Shadows being so valuable in the eyes of Naobito that he was willing to buy Toji's child from him and even guarantee him becoming the next head of the Zenin clan under certain conditions, as long as it ended with Megami keeping the technique in the bloodline. Megami being someone who even Gojo, the strongest on the planet, who not even Kenjaku was willing to face despite him countering black holes, rewinding people's brains 150 years into the past, and manipulating concepts at will, thinks will become even stronger than he is given enough time. Gojo's claims being backed by history that shows this exact thing happening. Someone having the same six eyes and limitless curse technique in the past, dying in a stalemate to a user of the Ten Shadows. Even Sukuna, the strongest of the Heian era, noticing Megami's potential as a fighter when reaching his limit, and seeing him as the only person worth keeping alive in the entire series. Even being willing to let Yuji die despite his literal soul living inside of Yuji's body. Megami's intelligence is one of the many things that's carried him as far as he's gotten in the series, giving him wins over Jiro, Kirara, and Reggie, an advantage against Dagon, and letting him survive against Toji. This intelligence when it comes to Megami is nothing new, as even as a 7 year old, Gojo was surprised by his mindset at that age, making Megami's strategic and analytic approach to his fights no surprise as he gets older, having a lineage that ties him to some of the strongest sorcerers across time, with a technique that's held power in Japan for generations that still holds up to this day. Seeing his progression in the series with this in mind makes it make much more sense why Gojo believes that he'll surpass him with enough time and training, especially with how quickly Megami can read his enemies and the situations he's in with very little information. That is all we have today for Megami Fushiguro, but there will definitely be more of these in the future. So if you like what you just heard, make sure to like and subscribe, and as always, have a great day guys.